So far we've talked a lot about how to use calculus to find either area or volume. So we've talked about area between curves. We've talked about this both in terms of x and in terms of y. We also talked about using the disk method if we were spinning a function around an axis, whether the x-axis or the y-axis. We also talked about the washer method. We could do this for x and y, but I've only written this out for x. We also talked about the shell method, where instead of slicing up a volume, we are peeling off shells. Then we switched from volume to talk about arc length. Well now the last step is to take this arc length and spin it around an axis, and that's going to give us surface area. So the surface area is when we're taking that arc length and spinning it again around either the x-axis or the y-axis. So if we took our function and looked at it at a delta x, and we looked at x of i minus 1 and x of i, we would have both a change in f and a change in x. Although you might not remember it, there is a formula for the lateral surface area of a cone that is pi times r the radius times the slant height. And the slant height is basically if you were an ant crawling up that cone, it's the distance you would travel. I'm a big fan of showing proofs when I think it offers something. This proof gets so lost in the details that I don't think it's worth going through. So you're just going to trust me when I say the surface area of a shape formed by a function spun around the x-axis is given by this. It's 2 pi times the integral from a to b of f of x times that same thing we had in the arc length, the square root of 1 plus f prime of x, where the f prime is squared. So you do see that arc length as part of what's going on here. So let's do a quick example. Let's let f of x be square root of x, and we're going to go from 1 to 4 in terms of x. And we want to find the surface area of the surface formed by spinning this function around the x-axis. This is really pretty straightforward. Again, we look at f of x, and we immediately find f prime of x because we're going to have to use it in our equation. In fact, to make things even simpler, I'm going to take that f prime of x and I'm going to go ahead and square that. And at that point, I'm going to plug it into our surface area equation. So once I do that, I get x to the 1 half times the square root of 1 plus 1 over x dx. Now, to make life a little simpler, I'm going to rewrite that x to the 1 half as square root of x, because then I can go ahead and combine the square roots into one square root. And when I do that, I get x times 1 plus 1 over 4x, and simply the square root of x plus 1 fourth. Now, if I look at this, I think this is a really straightforward u substitution. And so it is. u is just equal to x plus 1 fourth, du is equal to dx, I go ahead and integrate, I change it back to the x world, and I plug in my 1 and my 4, and I get this for an answer. Okay, can I simplify that? Yes. Do I care? No, I do not. Um, if you're using a software package like Newton, it will in fact accept this as the answer. Let's not make mistakes in the arithmetic. Let's go ahead and leave it like this. And of course, we could do this same thing, but spin it around the y-axis, but I'm not going to bother showing you an example for that because I am sure you can do that.